hi to all this is sister nasia from the department of english we shall discuss the poem edward dark point by anne renesinghe the outcomes of the poem edward dark point the students will be able to analyze the connection between the holocaust of the second world war and the war in sri lanka and perception of victimhood estimate social issues which were prevalent all over the country disturbing the human beings and the entire atmosphere finally they'll be able to generate values which bring peace forgiveness compassion and hope to the people around and rensinge born on october 2 1925 as analyst cards in essen germany is an internationally renowned poet from sri lanka escaping from nazi germany to england she married a sri lankan professor and became a citizen of sri lanka in 1956 her first collection of poems and the sun that sucks the earth to dry was published in 1971 although primarily a poet she has also published short stories essays and translations her works have been broadcast on radio and published in 17 countries and translated into nine languages drawing from her own life experience her writing has been described as vibrant sensuous or stark and deeply moving the holocaust is a recurring theme in an renesinghe's poetry and is contrasted with sri lanka's violent past as in july 1983 themes of alienation and minority persecution are found in many of her poems and renesinghe has won numerous local and international awards for her writing including the sri lankan arts council prize for poetry in 1985 and 1992 and non fiction in 1987 In 1994 she won the Sri Lankan Literary Award for best collection of short stories. The Holocaust seems so long ago but being a victim of the Second World War and Renesinghe stubbornly kept her memories alive through her poetry making connections with the war in Sri Lanka and perception of victimhood in a world that is rapidly growing indifferent. This assumes greater significance because in a few more decades there will be no one left alive who can remember world war second and the holocaust it is the literally expressions of victims memories that will continue to tell this harrowing story in 1939 when ann was 13 her parents sent her to england to escape the nazis to live with an aunt she has never seen before to live with strangers and learn a new language within 6 months world war 2 broke out and she became an enemy alien much later and would learn that her parents and all of her relatives had been murdered by the nazis the poem at what dark point sets in a lush and rich almost romantic background with the regular scenery where a stranger sitting under the aurelian tree in the poet's path and twisting the strands of a rope at once it brings innocence and beauty in life yet the poet just opposes the idea with sinister and evil torment let us look at the poem every morning i see him sitting in speckled shade of blossom laden aurelia tree which i planted many years ago in my garden and its branches now have spread in our lane under my tree in a shadow of silence he sits and with log skeletal hands sorts of strands from a tangle of just jutin fibers and twisting twisting makes a rope that grows and grows each day Every morning I pass him he sits in the golden haze brightness under my tree sits on the edge of his silence twisting his lengthening rope 
and watching me and seeing him sit day after day, sinister, silent, twisting his room to a future purpose of evilness, I sense the charred wood smell again. Chained glass exploding in the flames, a firework of fractured glass against the black November sky, the streets deserted all doors shut at 12 o'clock at night and running with animal fear. Between high houses shuttered tight, the jackboot ringing hard and clear while stalking with the lust for blood. I can still hear the iron heel, its echoing thud, and still can taste the cold winter Taste of charred wood, midnight fear, knowing that nothing is impossible, that nothing is impossible, that anything is possible, that there is no safety in words or houses, that boundaries are theoretical and love is relative to the choice before you. I know that anything is impossible anytime. There is no safety in poems or music or even in philosophy. No safety in houses or temples of any faith. And no one knows at what dark point the time will come again. Blood and knives, terror and pain of jock boots and twisted strand of rope and the impress of a child's small hand, paroxysmal mark on an oven wall scratched death mark on an oven wall is my child's hand. Here the poet seems to recall all her past childhood memories where she went through during the World War II, the murder, murdering that took place by Nazis. Millions of people were killed. And she recalls here, back to Sri Lanka, whatever she does, whatever she sees, again, once again, she's, she recalls her childhood memories through this poem. She says, suddenly the romantic verdant setting moves into a somber. The mechanical routine of the action has suddenly been transformed, arousing evil without any violation of the doer. This is what the poet experienced with a strong sense of genocide. It was her known world with the people who she had the trust, faith and reliance, suddenly metamorphosed into a mind -bog boggling horrific world of violence and brutality. It is her memory of Holocaust that triggers in her mind. The present scenery evokes her horrific past and inviolate in her consciousness. She says, and seeing him sit day after day, sinister silence, twisting his rope to a future purpose of evilness, I sense the charred wood smell again. With the innocent action of the man, she was potent with a signal of horror coming. It was the Nazi attack where humanity was reduced to beasts and there was no possibility of love and reason. Animal fears suggest the fact that hunting for prey, she smells the burning down of the beautiful synagogue and the bloodthirst of the hunters. Moreover, she depicts the picture with a sound effect, a echoing thud. She extends her experience by foregrounding her memory to the human context. Yet, as a whole, the poem conveys the deep pessimism of the poet. Neither the technological achievements nor cultural facts can safeguard for the primitive instincts of the humans. She says, I know that anything is possible anytime there is no safety. She does not believe in any abstract image of philosophy, music, or even no more faith in religion. Her ultimate emphasis is on the cycle of evil, which is endemic and moreover where the hunted and hunters are humans. 
drawing from her own life experiences, Rana Singh writes in the capacity of a Sri Lankan, though in this she does not attempt to pretend that Sri Lankan citizenship makes her a Sinhalese or a Tamil, a Christian, a Buddhist or a Hindu. She is a Sri Lankan to herself, and yet that is a troubling definition complicated by the memories of her childhood in Germany and her more assertive identification with her Judaism. Ranasinghe faced persecution during the Nazi Holocaust, a horror that would leave long-lasting scars. The Holocaust was an event she could never forget, and even as she looks around her in her new home, Sri Lanka, she realizes that sparks from the ashes of Auschwitz fall on her new home belonging to a Jewish family in Germany, she faced double subordination in terms of her gender as also due to the rise of Hitler in Germany. Her Holocaust poems thus are a tribute to the souls who suffered senseless violence at the hands of the Nazi. However, her poems do not only deal with her ordeal in Nazi Germany, she shows a deep sense of awareness and sensitivity to her adopted country, Sri Lanka. In the dismal social situation of Sri Lanka, she sees the Nazi past being rewritten in the form of the Tamil genocide. She does not write in Germany or Hebrew, but in English, a language she adopted much later in England. The loss of her mother tongue is one of the crimes she claims that the Nazi had committed. As she looks at the unfolding events in her new home, she realizes that the dark point is not far, where all means of discernment will cease and man will shrink into his inhumanity. This is different from her experience in Germany, where she was treated as a lesser being. While she had been discriminated against punished for no fault but for her birth, here she is one of the elite. Her poems show a deep connection with her past, the days she spent in Germany among loved ones, the Nazi ascent and the persecution she and her six million other Jews faced, her departure from Germany and finally the liquidation of her family and her friends. Her Holocaust poems thus are a tribute to the souls who suffered senseless violence at the hands of the Nazis. She also shows a deep sense of awareness and sensitivity to her adopted country, Sri Lanka. In the dismal social situation of Sri Lanka, she sees the Nazi past being rewritten in the form of the Tamil genocide. Though she uses English as a medium of expression and her use of English does mark her out as unquestionably Sri Lankan, it also shows her as one who is at a remove from a majority of her countrymen because of her elevated social status and her experience as a native of Germany at first and later her stay at England. She is therefore able to perceive what the people in Sri Lanka are unable to see. Coming to conclusion, as she looks at the unfolding events in her new home, she realizes that the dark point is not far where all means of discernment will cease and man will shrink into his inhumanity. However, she is conscious that the change of her position, a deficiency to an asset, does not simply empower her to speak for, it, for in spite of her cultural and geographical transition, she does not have all the answers yet. At what dark point is stimulated by the poet's Ranasinghe's persona? Spotting a sinister man who sits on the other side of her plush residential Colombo house fence and not Sijutu. She, the persona, is alarmed at this man's presence, which makes her memory run torrent and transport her to the World War days of Nazi terror. Neurotic, melodramatic, and burlesque ridden as the transportation may sound, 
one may, in spite of the person. Paranoia being caused by a single man seated at a democratic distance justify the turbulent mind of the narrator as a result of war's deep scars that dig deep into one's mind. Thank you. <laughs>